Hello friends, welcome back. Manually deploying the Azure functions is outdated. In this video, I'll show you how to automate your deployment using Azure DevOps CI CD pipeline. We will push our function code, create a pipeline, configure the settings and deploy it securely to Azure. If you want a seamless automated deployment process, this is the video for you. So come, let's get started. This video is part of the full stack development video series. We were building the smart certify online certification platform. All right. So the code is available in github.com slash learn smart coding. Go to the repository, filter with smart. If you filter with smart, you will find the smart certified angle 19.net core and the function. By the time you see this video, Azure functions will be also placed here. So you're going to take the code and the code will look like this. So we are going to see how we can deploy this function to the Azure app. We're going to see, we're going to see how we can deploy this Azure function into Azure portal using Azure DevOps CI CD pipeline. So log into the portal.azure.com and come here, search for Azure functions or function app and you will get like this. So I have a bunch of function apps, but we will see how we can create from the starting, but we will see how we can create from the start. So click on create and this will take you to the uh, first page where you will be selecting the plan. So Azure functions behind the scene are nothing but app service plan. So they will be sitting under an app service, but Azure functions advantages, it's serverless computing. So which means you don't need to do anything and based on how much it is running, the cost is going to get incurred for you. All right. Now, the first one, this is called hosting plan. And we have these five many, five plans. Flexible plan is the new plan that they have given. And uh, for us, the best plan is the consumption plan. The reason because it can scale. It is also fast and like it can scale up to 200 instance. It is fast and it is pay as you go. Plus a lot of, um, you know, 1 million requests is free, uh, uh, you know, for every user. So this is the best that we can use and remaining on dollars going to incur some costs, but we don't need it for our learning purpose. So I'm going to select the consumption plan. And the next one is what we have to fill up all of this information. The basic is we need to choose the subscription. In this case, I'm going to choose the subscription and I'm going to choose a resource group. And here you need to have a unique name for your function. So I'm going to name it as a smart certify function app and which will be unique. That's why there's a tick mark coming here. If you see a red mark, your name is not unique. So you can always have a different name. And this function that we created in the last video is based on .NET. So I'm going to choose that and I'm going to choose the version that was nine isolated worker model a region. You can choose closest region to which this Azure function has to be deployed and where you need to deploy Windows or Linux. I will choose Windows. Next, this is the storage account and uh, you can see um, I'm going to leave most of the things to its default. So storage account is this and you know, if you want to have a Azure file collection, you can just select this and then all of the things I'm going to leave as the default one. So I'm not choosing the diagnostic setting, which we can do later. Networking, I want this to be enabled, meaning uh, outside internet from the internet, you should be able to access this endpoint. That is why it is called public enabled. Monitoring, you can either enable the application insights under the monitoring or you can disable it. But let's say we enabled it. Okay. And then deployment, we're not going to choose any deployment here because we're going to automate using this Azure DevOps. Next is tag. Tag is very important. So always try to have the tag that basically we are um, having some information regarding the resource. So, and then the last one is the review and create. See, the basic authentication for this app is currently disabled and many and may impact deployment. Basically, you cannot open up or you know, deploy manually using just the username and password that's called basic authentication. It's good for the protection. So let it be disabled because we don't need it. We'll be using the Azure service principle for deploying it. The final step, everything looks good. So I'm going to click on create. So it is initiating the deployment. Everything looks okay. It will deploy our Azure app. I mean, the function app in few seconds. All right, so deployment is now completed. I'm going to click on the go to resource and this is what you will see. So basically, a function apps are nothing but it is a collective of more than one functions. So the a single function that you wrote in the previous video 
which is here it's just one function but this function app is nothing but a collection of functions which we are going to see now all right so we have everything here this is our actual url so if you open up this it will initially look like this so basically this is the microsoft deployed content uh, for the initial app and if you expand this function right now we have some uh, app keys you know app files but nothing else is there there is no function here you see this there's no function okay so we're going to deploy this now let's open dev.azure.com dev. let's open dev.azure.com and i logged into my organization using my credential and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you where the code is i mean you're going to take the code from github and you're going to push it to your azure devops if you don't know how to do so i will give this playlist and you can see in this video we show how we will push the code to the uh, azure devops okay so the assumption is when you come to this you are having the repository here okay so from here we are going to deploy it once you push a code to the azure devops then this is what the code will look like so what we will do is we will go to the project setting first and click on service connection so we have to create a service connection and so because we need to establish the connection between our azure devops and the azure portal so i'm going to click on new service connection and here you can choose azure resource manager click on next this one is automatic automatic it is now trying to find out our subscription this is going to trigger a login process see it's still loading it will trigger a login process to which i need to log into the azure portal it just triggered so i authenticated myself now it is asking me to choose which subscription this is the subscription under which we have the azure function app so i'm going to choose this resource group is this service connection is for azure i'm going to choose a name like this for azure function just for understanding purpose and i'm going to grant this access come here click on save it is setting up the connection so let's wait for the connection to establish see we got the new connection so now what we do let's go to the repository and go to this pipeline so i'm going to click on new pipeline but before that there are two more pipelines one is for api one is for the angular application if you go to this um, playlist for our full stack development video series these two are the two ci cd pipeline videos that corresponds to dotnet core 9 and angular 19 all right i will give you these links in the description so don't worry I'm going to click on new pipeline select where is the code in our case it is azure repository select which repository it is and then select the next option so here options are dotnet or function you see this dotnet core function app deployed to windows on azure that is what we are doing right so we choose the windows as our app service plan and we are choosing uh, azure functions to be deployed so if you choose this template it is trying to load now so it is going to ask you where is it okay i see the subscription and where your your uh, azure function is there my azure function app is here i will choose this continue now it is trying to authenticate me again so i authenticated myself and now what will happen because i choose the subscription it is going to list down what function app we have and we have this function app so i choose this this is the working directory validate and configure now it is going to read our file and create the ci cd pipeline all together in one shot and that is what we got now if you verify this azure subscription is here that is your subscription id how do i find it just to verify if you come here to the portal and search subscription like this you land here and this is the one it should ideally be selected so it starts with 99 let's go take a look all right so it generated all the files here and we can quickly see the subscription function name and everything else so what is this one after it it has the variable of this function name and azure subscription it is talking about where our code is going to be deployed like you know built our code will be taken and built in windows latest machine which is fine and then stages like next is the build step and then it is going to zip all the content that has been um, you know built finally it will put as a zip file after that a stage is called deployment 
deployment process what will happen it knows where to deploy which is added here so it will go and deploy like it will actually unzip the file and deploy for us so we're going to click on save and run commit the file this file to the same main branch which it is doing and then it initiated the first deployment process the build is happening you can see after the build it is deployed so build is running let's take all right so after some time the build process was done you can see the artifacts is uploaded like basically the content of the project but if you go to deployment it is still in the pending state so job is pending it also shows that this pipeline needs permission need to view it all right so if you see something like this just click on it and just allow it, this application to have deployed now once we grant the access the deployment process will start right away an agent will come and pick it up so basically agent is like um, you know see once we gave the permission the agent was available it picked up the um, downloaded content it just uh, found the artifact downloaded it it is now deploying it see got service connection detail from the uh, connection service like you know from the connections service connection that we did and it is basically going to deploy it so once this is deployed it will show you that this is successfully done let's wait for that okay so after waiting for some time it just deployed and everything is good you can click on the logs if you want to see what it actually did right so now if we go to this application wherever our function app was there so let's go here and select the one that we just did i think this was the one and if i go here now under the functions or even under the overview you will see the functions here okay so under the overview you can see the functions got deployed basically the code that i deployed had four function that's why it's four is showing but when you try for the very first time based on this uh, video only one function will come but eventually you will also get all of these four things which i will be publishing the code to the github repository soon so once you have this what you can do is you can actually go inside this function and run it okay but what you have to do is you need to understand few more things so under function there is something called app keys so under app keys these are called master key and default key so this is the key that is used for the function level uh, scope and master key is the one that is used for the admin level scope all right so let's go to overview again let's click on the email notification that is what we will be doing and basically this is what uh, you know it will show you so let's wrap this up in the little bit top okay so now if you click on get function url this function url will have the default key added to it see these are the keys that are showing up and here it will show you the function url okay so the code is appended but if you wanted to test and run from here like click on test and run and it will ask you which key to choose we can choose we can choose the key here and this is the body right so let's test this out what we will get we will see so i'm not going i'm not going to give anything here and then run it if the function is running properly see it is showing error that it is invalid body request because we did not send the right things right so you will also see the logs that has been added here these logs are based on the code that we have okay so this is the code that we have and let's say if we give the proper values okay i'm going to show you what and all error is going to happen and see how to fix it so if i go here to the input in the body if i choose this as the input if i run what happened the, if something is going wrong it is going to display here actually our application broke it's saying connection string is null and it did not run okay there's an error okay so what are we missing so this is very very important this is the application that we were referring to azure functions right remember in azure functions when we ran the application locally so this is the azure functions and if you go to the local dot settings dot json these are the settings see when you run the application locally all of this information has been fetched from the locally running code but this file 
this file will never ever be deployed or included in your deployment so you will never have these functions you will never have any of these things so what you have to do you need to configure this in the azure environment for example connection string so i'm going to copy the connection string of the real database so i copied the real database connection string let's go to that so i'm going to go to the azure functions and under the settings there's something called configuration so go to the configuration and there will be two configuration one is for the app settings and one is for the connection settings so in the connection in the configuration uh, it's not there it basically shows what uh, the version of this one so i think we have to go to the environment variable all right so under the uh, settings there is something called environment variable to the left side if you go here there will be two two things app settings and connection string if you go to connection string and it will show you the connection string here so we are going to add the same section here db context add the value and we will choose this sql server apply apply here confirm here so we are creating a db context property under the connection string and we have also gave the values now in order okay let it save first okay the connection string has been updated now if you go to app settings you can see these are all inbuilt variables right we do not have variables something that we wanted based on the application for example so we need a value like mm, from address okay we need the value from from address we need uh, the send grid api so in order to add any of these values what you have to do is copy the key come here click on add i'm just showing you you should just add the value here correct value this is an incorrect value and then say apply similarly add all of these things whatever is, is given to you like for this api to run we need this we need this we need we don't need anything else only these two so once you add this and apply now if you try to uh, you know invoke the function which we are going to do now so i go to overview go to the same function go to the test and run and enlarge this keep the body here you can keep a function key if you run email notification processed at least the at least the function ran successfully if you need to see the logs it will be displayed here okay and if the connection string i mean if the application insights has been configured you can click here and you can take a look at the log and log level based on what level you choose it will be showed here so remember it is easy if you wanted to just test it out logs are displayed here so logs are displayed here and if you give the proper value you know those logs also will be displayed here so this is how you run the function okay so let's recap we took the existing function app that was developed in visual studio 2022 for dotnet core 9 isolated version we created an Azure function app in Azure portal. We also saw how we can deploy or create the service connection in the Azure DevOps and establish the connection, create the CI CD pipeline and make sure our application is deployed to the uh, Azure function. And not only that, we also saw how you can configure the, um, you know, the connection string and other app settings values in the azure function app so if you like this video don't forget to hit that like button and if you have any questions or comments let me know in the comment section share this with your friends and and stay tuned we have a lot of other videos coming up for the same series and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!